How to make a vintage Bassett Loke steam plant work again, part 3. This covers cleaning the spirit burner, insulating and repainting the boiler casing and cleaning the steam engine. On screen at the moment though is the spirit burner. It's sat on the bandsaw, burning away quite happily. It's still burning yellow because someone in the past put paraffin in it. And you must never put paraffin in spirit burners. Otherwise they burn very yellow. I've put an entire bottle so far of this through it. It's methylated spirits, and I think it's called Denatured Alcohol in the USA. And several viewers took the time to write in and tell me this, which is a good thing. And now after burning an entire bottle of methylated spirits, the flame on the burner heads is looking much better than it did originally. Leaving the spirit burner burning, it's time to move on to other things. The next job on the agenda is the boiler casing. Here I'm cleaning up the boiler casing with some Scotch-Brite just to key the paint. This is a casting and there are one or two lumps, so what I thought I would do is use my small Minicraft drill with a drum sander fitted to flatten off the lumpy parts of the casting. I've had this Minicraft drill for many, many years, and this week I've trekked myself to a couple more. I bought a larger Minicraft drill with a much better, much larger drill chuck, so I'll be able to put bigger drill bits in there, which will be very useful for certain applications. That was bought via eBay, and I really look forward to it arriving. This week I also bought another mini drill. This one was very good value for money, I think. It was called a Vosch, V-O-C-H-E. It's rechargeable and I can hang it over the workshop on a shelf. And the good thing about it is I can use the flexible drive to get into spaces where my other mini drills won't reach. Health and safety. Many things in the workshop can cause injury or death. So I recommend taking no chances. Always wear PPE, personal protective equipment. Always take health and safety seriously. This is a setup that I usually wear when making my breakfast in the kitchen. In the workshop, I also wear an all over, one size fits all biohazard suit. So here I am back in the workshop and I'm kitted out in my PPE, personal protective equipment, and I'm painting the boiler mounting. I'm using black spray paint for this. This is satin black. First of all, I spray the inside. I don't really need to, but I thought, well, at least while I'm painting like this, the little ball inside the can will be mixing the paint for when I do the outside part. The odd thing about this boiler casing casting is the front part, this is the part that holds the chimney, is made from either brass or gun metal. It's a non-ferrous metal. Whereas the rear part is made from cast iron. That's the part that was broken that I fixed with some JB weld and a small metal plate to bridge the gap. I think the repair will be very successful. You can see it from the inside, but you can't see it at all from the outside because it's on the line of the fake brickwork that's cast into the part. Whether my painting technique is right or wrong, I don't much care because I don't get any drips usually and I get a very good coating. I start with one thin coat, then I go over with another coat and eventually I apply quite a thick coat for the final one. In this clip I'm painting the inner surface of the two side plate castings. Again, this is not very important because the inside part of these are going to be covered in some heat insulation material. This is the more important bit, painting the outside. These castings are not really very nice castings, they're not very smooth. And I did think about using the linisher to flatten them off a bit, but then I thought, no, I'll just keep this period as it was built. As you should know by now if you watch these videos regularly, I occasionally get some really bizarre comments. And I got one the other day, it was really intended to upset me. Some pathetic viewer, who obviously crawled from underneath a stone somewhere, started off by saying, Call yourself a machinist, blah 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 blah. Uh, well no, I don't call myself a machinist. I call myself a trainee axe murderer and part-time brain surgeon. And for any viewers watching this with a normal quantity of brain cells, I'd just like to say that there is a lot more to this hobby than just standing at a machine tool and playing with your micrometer. The diversity of the type of jobs that I do in these videos illustrates very clearly, I feel, the stupidity of that comment. For instance, at the moment, I'm fitting these thin metal plates that hold the heat insulation in place. And can you believe it? Two of the holes hadn't been drilled or threaded. In one side they were, in this side they weren't, so I drilled and threaded them. This is a 7BA tap going into the hole and I'm being very careful not to break off the tap. I didn't paint these parts because the original parts weren't painted and they seem to have survived for many, many years. The engine's been sat in this pot of cellulose thinners overnight and now all of the paint's falling off, which is what I wanted it to do. 
This is a good way of cleaning engines because it's not invasive, it doesn't damage the parts, it doesn't cover the parts in a load of grit as it would if I was bead blasting the parts, and it's very easy to do. I could use commercial paint stripper but it's unnecessary, just leave the parts in a pot of cellulose thinners overnight and the paint just drops off the components. Really I suppose I should wear rubber gloves for this, but I don't like wearing rubber gloves, or gas masks, or all over rubber suits for that matter. Please don't write in and tell me how dangerous cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner is because I'm aware of it and I try not to dip my fingers in the stuff. Now that the paint's gone I can see that I need to clean up these end caps because they're quite rusty. In this clip I'm using my small barco spanner and no barco spanners do not round the nuts and I'm just checking the tension of the long bolts that hold the crosshead guide to the cylinder because there is a bit of a leak on this side so I may look at this further before I put it back together. Originally these exhaust pipes faced downwards into a collector that went underneath the baseboard. I'm not going to do that, I'm going to make a new collector. I thought this was quarter inch piping, but no, it's actually slightly thicker. What I propose to do is to make an exhaust collector and re-solder these pieces of pipe into the collector, and then the combined exhaust from the collector can be piped up the chimney. I'm just giving the engine a final wipe over with the toothbrush to make sure there's no bits of paint sticking to it. With the pipe set to the correct position, I'm measuring the distance between the centres of them, and it's one inch. The cellulose thinners that I've been using is not very good now, it's too contaminated, I'll throw this away. So I did that, and then I placed the engine in the plastic box and went and bought some more thinners. This has a label that says premium thinner stuck on it, and this is completely wrong because the stuff I'm smelling here as I pour it over the engine is not premium thinners, it's standard thinners, and it smells horrible, it has a fishy smell to it. I think there's some formaldehyde in there or something. Anyway, I will phone the company on Monday and complain. So what's my problem? Why am I being so picky? Premium thinners is more expensive than standard thinners because it's better for its intended application of thinning automotive paint. And I'm just using it for degreasing model steam engines and removing paint. And I don't like it because of the smell, it's horrible. While still wearing my all-over biohazard suit, it's time to remove the paint from these small metal covers that go over the cylinders. And these covers just clip onto the existing cylinders. A very clever idea, Mr. Bassett Loke. I really am impressed by this. As you can see in this clip, I'm using my new flexible drive with a drum sander fitted. And it's really easy to use. And once again, here it is hung on the shelf. There's more than meets the eye to these small end caps fitted to this engine. When I look inside them, can you see it says domes of silence and a patent number and this, that and the other. So I'm really not sure about this. I've never come across anything called domes of silence before. Not even in the game called Skyrim that I play on my Xbox One X. Anyway, that's another story. Now that the cylinder covers and the cylinder end caps are all cleaned up, including this small junction that goes over the piping between the cylinders, it's time to spray them. This is Phoenix Paints Etch Primer. It's always a bit weird to spray with, but once it's on there, it doesn't run and it looks fine. Now the engine's back in the new cellulose thinners, the smelly stuff, and I'm removing the paint from the flywheel. This engine's not going to clean up brilliantly because it's been stored for quite a few years in a very unsteam engine friendly place by the look of it, and it's been very unloved, but it runs beautifully. And when it's finished, you'll be surprised how well it does look. I'm scraping off some paint from the body of the engine, and as you can clearly see, this engine used to be green. It looks like some of these parts on this engine were nickel or chrome plated, and the rust has got through the plating, so it's very difficult to remove. I'd like to take this opportunity to speak about Patreon. One of my Patreon viewers keeps sending me lots of information and telling me what I should and shouldn't do. What he's basically saying is that I'm stupid and I should make some videos that are just for Patreon, so people have to pay to watch them. Okay, it's not a lot, it's about a dollar a month, which if you think how many videos I make, I make one nearly every day, and this takes considerable time within my schedule of work. So to all of my Patreon subscribers, I thank you very much, but there aren't enough of you, unfortunately. I do thank you for the PayPal.me donations as well. Every little helps, because I'm forever having to buy things to make these videos. Once the etch primer had dried thoroughly on the cylinder covers and the end caps, I gave them a coat of satin black. While I was cleaning this engine in the bath of cellulose thinners, I noticed that this aluminium base is not original to the engine. Can you see what's happened? Someone's built an aluminium base around the existing base. I'm going to leave it like that because it's part of the engine's history. 
That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.